and welcome back to the vlog. Tomorrow I'm headed out with a buddy to go shed hunting, and so I figured I would use this time to just uh, run through everything that I take on a shed hunt. But before we do that, let's just admire this antler for a hot sec. Super crazy. This thing's got like a nine inch kickstand, and he just props up perfectly. Super awesome. I love sheds. But yeah, let's dive in to gear. And first up, here is what I'm wearing. Starting off with my top layers as my base layer, I've got the Sika Core Lightweight Hoodie. I uh, wicks moisture really well. Often when you're shed hunting, you're hiking many, many miles and just sweating hard. So it's good to have a base layer that wicks moisture. Um, it's also got a very deep zipper, so I can really bend out if I need to show off. But uh, <laughs> Then on top of that, I've got the Core Heavyweight Hoodie from Sitka as well. Also wicks moisture well, it's just a nice little add layer if you're on these windy ridges and still sweating hard. Um, it's just a nice little additional piece. I'm rocking the Sika hanger pants. These things are kind of like a stretchy Carhartt. They move really well with you and yet they're super rugged. So they've also been treated with permethrin, which just helps deter ticks and whatnot. It actually kills ticks. Not running any long johns, at least for tomorrow. My boxers, in case anyone's wondering, are the Sika Merino Core Lightweight Boxers. In my pockets of these pants, I've got blizzard mitts. These are the warmest gloves that Sika makes. My hands are just always getting cold, and so I just like, I don't mess around with gloves. I just go straight for the warmest mitt um, that they make. I've also got a buff. I love this for sun protection, wind protection, snow protection. I can look like I'm a real cowboy. I have a bino harness as well. This is a new prototype from Sitka. I'm rocking uh, the EL 10x42 Swaros. Uh, and this little side pocket here. Got my sunglasses, and then on the right here, um, via, a Molly, via a Molly webbing attachment, FHF gear bear spray holster. Uh, we're bear country, so it's super smart to always be packing bear spray. And I love that it's on my bino harness instead of like my pack or something, because my bino harness, my binos are always going with me anywhere. Say I get up to a ridge and I stop the glass, I dump my pack, maybe I walk 10 yards, Suddenly, I don't have my bear spray, but if it's attached to my vinyl harness, it's always with me. Two-way radio, uh, you can keep in touch with your buddy with this if you don't have cell service. All right, now let's just jump into my pack and kind of all the gear that I'm taking with me. So most of the shed hunts I do are just big one-day trips. You know, you're often out hiking 10 plus miles every day, but you're always coming back. I'm rarely camped out. I do do some camp out trips, but this one we're doing tomorrow is a big day trip. And so the pack that I'm using is a Mystery Ranch Scapegoat. Um, I think it's like a 30 liter pack. I love it, it's, it's a bigger day pack. You can load it down with a lot of weight. You know, if you're lucky, you're strapping on multiple antlers. Um, but yeah, this is kind of my go-to pack for a lot of things. One thing that's super nice for shed hunting is on the back here, there's these two straps that run all the entire width of the pack. The webbing is super duper long, and so if you had a really big load of antlers, you could strap them onto here pretty easily. Uh, the other nice thing that Mystery Ranch packs have, and a number of pack companies have this, specifically they use auto lock buckles. And what auto lock buckles are, um, they basically have this little cam system in them right here that prevents them from slipping. So these, you know, once you tighten them down, like they lash a load on super duper well. All right, so let's dive into everything that I have inside this pack. First off, snowshoes. These ones are Northern Lights snowshoes. Northern Lights makes some really awesome bomber products. The reason I especially love these is they're the basically the lightest snowshoes on the market. When you're hiking 10 miles a day, ounces matter. Also always bring one ski pole or trekking pole. Um, it just, you know, if you have a heavy load or if you're going through deep snow or up steep faces, uh, track and pull just really saves your knees and kind of gives you an extra balancing point. That's also nice too, if you are glassing, you can, you can plant your pole on the ground and stick your vinyls up on here and use it kind of as a, as a tripod to glass. Diving into the pack now. I love this pack out, it just opens up real nice. You can access everything inside the main compartment here. Got a light little rain jacket. This is the Sika Gear Vapor Shake Dry Jacket. It's basically the lightest rain jacket 
on the market. Super duper light, virtually no weight consequence. This piece right here, this is a really light insulation layer from Sitka. Uh, it's called the Kelvin Active Jacket. This is the old prototype. The new ones are in Optifade. What I love about this thing is you can throw it on and it's got a lot of insulation properties and value, heat retention value, but you can also hike hard in it and sweat hard in it and it's gonna breathe pretty well. A little thing of water right here. And then I've also got a big liter and a half deal of water right here. I, I found that on big day trips, I need at least two liters of water. And so with this, I get that. Uh, this water bottle, it's just, sometimes it falls out of this pocket. And so I just carabinered it. Just attached it to the side right here. Last thing in the main compartment here, I've got my emergency kit. Let's just take a quick look at everything inside my emergency kit. Um, I store everything just in this bag. I don't know what bag this is. You could honestly use a Ziploc. You could use a little stuff sack, whatever. I just try to keep everything that goes in my emergency kit together. So first up, this is quick clot clotting sponge and it does what it says right here. It stops bleeding fast. And so if you get a really big cut, say a grizzly bear comes over and rips my arm off, I'm bleeding profusely. Basically, I would just take this sponge, I would put it on the wound, and then I would apply a bunch of pressure um, or, or wrap it. So, so this is um, just like sport wrap. And so I would wrap it around um, the wound and this is gonna be your best chance of survival if you're bleeding super duper bad. Never had to use it, but it's a good one to have in the emergency kit. Got a couple Band-Aids, got Pepto-Bismol, Leatherman Squirt, little multi-tool, Outdoor Edge knife. Um, love these knives, extremely sharp, uh, replaceable blade. They're gonna be a little bit more burly than something like a Havilon. Havilon's also great too though. A couple spare blades, wet fire, fire starter. You light this stuff, you just light the packaging on fire and this thing will put out some pretty serious heat and flame to help you know get a fire going. Catodyne MicroPure tablets. You can just add them to water that maybe you get from a creek um, that you want to treat. Super light purification tablets. Just got a pile of those just in case you ever ran out of water. You wouldn't be shit out of luck. Here I've got electrical tape, duct tape, and flagging tape. Got an emergency bivy. I prefer a bivy because it's gonna trap heat a lot better than just an emergency blanket. One of my most important pieces in my emergency kit is this Garmin InReach. Uh, this is an InReach mini version. It just has a smaller screen. This is a satellite texting device. It also has an SOS feature. If ever I'm in super duper big trouble, I can press the SOS. I can also pair it with my phone. I can text people from the mountains. Um, really rad device and you know it weighs maybe three ounces. Spare headlamp battery, backup headlamp, whistle, a couple zip ties, cause you never know. Matches, a Bic lighter, little Allen wrench key, cause I have a number of camera gear items that use this. A spare SD memory card, in case I forget to put one in my camera. Very important, toilet paper, another fire starting device. And then I just have this short little like three foot piece of paracord. Um, for strapping things on my pack, whatever. There's you know infinite amount of uses for paracord. All right, next up on the pack, uh, there's two uh, big zippered pockets right here, little compartments. In the smaller of the two zippered compartments, I've got just a couple random accessories. Um, I've got a Titan strap. I use this to lash antlers together before I strap them to my pack. Toilet paper a battery brick with an iPhone cable, just for charging my phone. Garbage bag in case I find a deadhead and super stinky, I don't wanna strap it to my pack, but I wanna like keep my pack from getting all covered in gunk. Got an extra camera battery for my Sony a7R 3 Got a wire saw. Uh, what I use this for is if I find a deadhead, I can either like cut through the spine or I can actually saw the actual antlers off. Definitely refer to your state's regulations on deadhead Legality, like some places you can't pick them up, you have to call a game warden first. Um, be sure to refer to that before you go out and just start sawing off dead ends. And then in the bigger pocket, this is kind of where I keep all my food. So first off, big giant bag of trail mix. I do custom trail mix, and by that I mean I just go buy a bunch of things that I really love in bulk, and then I mix them together. So I have a handful of like walnuts and peanuts and whatnot, but for the most part, this is like chocolate covered almonds, chocolate covered blueberries, 
uh, dried blueberries, mango pieces, way better than traditional trail mix. Honey stinger waffles, they usually bring three per day. Got a honey stinger uh, mint almond protein bar, super good. Cliff shot blocks, um, these if you ever bonk, like if you ever have like a, a blood sugar low and you just get super tired, you pop a couple of these in, take a swig of water, literally in five minutes you, for, you will forgot that you were even tired. Probably my favorite bar of all time, it's called a Big Sur bar. 630 calories and it costs $2.95. So if you were to break down the cost per calorie of basically any food out there, um, Big Sur bar is like ranks right up there. It doesn't taste like a traditional granola bar or anything. It's, it's like made fresh. There's no preservatives or anything. Um, actually, you have to keep these in the freezer or refrigerator because after like seven days, they're going to go bad. Um, but that's part of why they're so good. Also got some beef jerky. And I've just found over the years of uh, when you're hiking hard and all day, if all you are eating is mostly carbs, eventually carbs just don't cut it. You need like a real protein to kind of help sustain you. And so, um, so yeah, I just go with traditional regular beef jerky. And then I usually like to do a little fresh fruit. Um, sometimes it's an apple, sometimes it's a handful of these little clementine oranges. Um, either way, nothing better than fresh fruit. In this other water bottle pocket here, I've got another Titan strap, um, again, just for lashing on antlers. And then in the waist belt pocket, I've got my headlamp. The headlamp I use, it's the best one of all time ever. Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. I'm not lying. <laughs> uh, this is a Phoenix, that's F-E-N-I-X, H-L-60-R. It's a USB powered headlamp. It uses one of these big giant batteries and um, this thing is crazy bright, lasts a really long time. Um, I think its max output is 950 lumens. If things go bump in the night or you need to light up the world, this is the headlamp for you. It's, it's also got a red mode, so if you're worried about something being too bright or if you're walking in while you're hunting, you can pop it to red mode. It also doesn't have an up or a downside. So it's like if I put it on this way versus this way, it doesn't matter because this thing rotates fully up and down either way. Again, literally the best headlamp ever made. I recommend this thing to people all the time. So not sponsored either, but go get you one. Another super important item that I bring as well is my cell phone. Obviously you can use your cell phone for communication if you have a service. You can take some pretty rad photos and videos with cell phones these days. But the one app that I use almost all the time that's basically, that, that has entirely replaced um, my need for like a traditional GPS is the OnX Hunt app. Basically a GPS on your phone. It's got all these different overlays, private public lands. One really cool feature that I use all the time is the tracker tool. And so if you're, if you're in the app and you go down to the bottom right corner and you just click tracker, you can just press start and start and record, you know, your trip. And so you can, you can see how many miles you've hiked. You can like, if you're going to grid search a zone, you can like, look at the map and see your exact like grid so you know you know if you hit an area or not super useful you can also use it if you don't have service so you can save these offline maps and your phone's still going to track you within the app so super rad oh and lastly um i don't actually shed hunt barefooted um the boots that i've been rocking pretty much all this past year um these are the la sportiva trango tower extremes uh, they're a lightly insulated, basically mountaineering boot. They're super stiff, they have a stiff shank, so a lot of times when you're shed hunting, you're up in the mountains and traversing like steep side hills that are all icy and stuff, and these guys really, really stand out super well. So I've been uh, pretty stoked on this boot. So that's just a quick run through of everything that I take on a shed hunt. Before we jump to the next part, if you like this video, hit the like button, and if you want to see more, and you're watching on YouTube, uh, hit subscribe. That would help me out a ton.